In this video, I'm going to show you how we use AAWP to automatically add Amazon affiliate products to our blog posts in WordPress. I'll show you how to add best selling products, specific products, comparison tables, use the shortcodes to pull product data into your content, and even show you how to add this into your business's processes as your company grows. After you've signed up for AAWP, you'll be able to come over to account, and then if you scroll down, you'll see an option for downloads. Click on that and then click on the download button. Once that's finished downloading, come over to your website, go to plugins, click on add new, and then click on upload plugin. And then you can simply drag and drop the file you just downloaded into here and click on install now. Next, click on activate plugin. You'll then get met with a screen like this. What you next wanna do is click on this red settings menu item. And now we need to go back to the AAWP website to get our license key. You can get that by clicking on this licenses link on the left. And then copying out whatever is said in here. Going back to your website and then pasting that into the license key field. Then click on verify license. And you should see this come up. Now you need to come over to your Amazon Associates account, hover on Tools and click on Product Advertising API. Once that loads, you then need to scroll down to the bottom here and click on the Add Credentials button. This is going to create your Access Key and your Secret Key. When you create these, make sure you save them locally because if you forget what your Secret Key is, it's very difficult to get it back. Now come back to your website and paste the Access Key you just generated into the API Key field and then paste your secret key into the API secret field. Underneath that, you'll wanna select the domain extension for the country that you signed up to the Amazon Associates program with, which for me in this instance is Code at UK. And then you'll wanna paste in your tracking ID in this field right here. Then click on the connect button above and if everything has been inputted correctly, you'll then get it come back with a tick that says connected. That's everything you need to do to get AAWP set up and working on your website, but there are a couple of quick settings you might want to consider. If you click on the output tab right here, you'll scroll down a bit and see a heading that says pricing, and by default, advertised price will be set to standard. I like to set this to hide advertised price so it doesn't show the pricing on any of our product boxes. On top of that, where we have the buy on Amazon button, I like to change this to literally anything other than Amazon and I like to change this label from buy on Amazon to say check price. Now the reason why I would like to do both of those settings is because I don't want to show the visit of the price because I want to create curiosity about what the price is. And on top of that, I don't want to show them what the website is they can buy it from because I want them to click on my link to see what the website is. That way, I'll get commission on anything they buy within the next 24 hours. And in terms of the color that you set this button, it's usually good practice to make your button the opposite color to whatever your website's usual color is. So if you've got a blue website, it's often good to make this an orange button because then it's going to stand out a little bit better. Also, another setting that I forgot to mention is this Display Amazon Prime logo beside the advertised price, whether the service is available for the related product. I'll usually set this to hide because, again, if we show that tick and the Prime, most people know that if it shows that, they could get that product from Amazon and they don't need to click our link. So I usually hide that as well. So now that that's done, scroll down to the bottom and then click on Save Changes. The best feature AAWP has is its ability to pull in the best selling products from Amazon that contain a specific keyword and it only takes a couple of seconds to set this up on your WordPress blog post. All you have to do is click on add block and then find the AAWP block and click on that. Once you click on that you'll see you've got six different options here and you want to click on bestseller list. Now it's asking you to put in a keyword and it's giving us the example of 4k monitor so we'll use that. Now I'm going to scroll back up and you can see as quickly as that we've now created these 10 different product listings here that are the best selling products on Amazon that contain the keyword 4K monitor. 
Considering that only took me about 30 seconds to set up, that's way better than you'll ever get doing this manually, but we have now got a bunch of settings we can use to improve this even more. And bear in mind if this product is no longer being sold in 12 hours time, it'll automatically be removed from our post and replaced with another one. That's something that without the use of this bestseller list plugin, you'd have to get a member of your team to manually change. And for me, it makes it totally worth the yearly subscription. As we come down the different settings on the right here, you'll see the first one we've got is lists and this is where we can set the number of products we want to pull back on our post by default that's set to 10 I usually set it to 3 but for this example I'm going to set it to 8 we've then got the option to show or hide the ribbon that's this right here where it says bestseller no one and we can change this text if we want and we could literally put anything in here at all but the only other way I really ever use it is I might put hashtag and then percent number percent to get it to pull in hashtag one two three four five six seven eight then there's also the option to do the same thing where it's got the sal ribbon on the right and you could also put that number in there and you could get creative with this if you wanted you might say deal one deal two deal three etc i've never done that but you could do that if you wanted to doesn't really make sense to be honest but you could do that then you also have the option to order the products. So you could say you want these ordered in the amount that's saved or the percentage that's saved or lowest to highest price or highest to lowest rating or you could even order them alphabetically based on the title. I don't normally touch any of this stuff but it's nice to have the option to do it. You've also then got the ability to filter these products and you could say I only want to bring in products that are over a certain price or that contain a certain keyword. So you might only want to show Samsung in here, for example, and then you could just type Samsung in that filter right there, make sure this is set to include, and then as you go down, there shouldn't be any products here that aren't Samsung. We could also do the same thing with the price. We could say we don't want to show any that are under 150, and then we'd need to change the filter compare from equal to more. And then that way it's going to not just look for products that are £150, but it's going to look at anything over £150. I don't mind that personally, and sometimes I will set things like that. So I'm going to leave that one on. Then we've got the length of the title. And so that's referring to this product title right here. You might not want this too long if you're worried about it taking too much space up on your page, for example. And so you might set this to 50, though I never really do. And then it will be appended with a ellipsis at the end. And then you've also got the ability to change where that link goes through to. So when they click that by default, that will just take them through to the product page. It could also take them through to the reviews page for that product, or it could automatically add that product to their cart. I never mess with this stuff either, but again, it's a very good option that we can do that. Then we can set the amount of items in the description. So you'll notice these are all bullet points here. And by default, it will be set to have a maximum of five. I will often reduce this because as you can see with this one right here, it can get quite long. And sometimes I'll shorten the amount of characters in here as well. I'll often set this down to three. And then the description length I'll often set to 100. And then you'll see again, we'll get an ellipsis anywhere where it goes over that. You can even change the image size right here if you want to. If you wanted it to be higher res images or lower res images, you can do that. Again, I always leave that as it is. We've also got the ability to change the Amazon button settings. We can completely turn it off if we don't want it there for some reason. And we can also overwrite the check price that we wrote in earlier. And we could set this to just say view product, for example, if you thought that was gonna perform better on this particular blog post. We can then choose whether or not we wanna show ratings and reviews. We can also change the template that we use here. Again, I don't really do any of this stuff, but it is quite cool that you can set this to show uh, vertical list and you can also set it to be columns so you can do two columns and then they're going to appear next to each other like that this will lose some of the stuff we done earlier as you can see there's no description anymore but again for the most part you might as well just leave this as default and then finally we can overwrite our tracking ID here if for some reason we wanted to and we can also add an additional CSS class if we wanted to do some unique styling to this particular bestseller list Again, we rarely ever do this. So let's just click on Save Draft now and take a quick look at it. So as you can see, we've got some really nice looking product boxes here. And it literally took a couple of minutes for us to set this up. And as I said earlier, this is going to auto update as soon as this isn't 
being sold anymore. They're going to take this product out and then put a new one in its place within 12 hours. AAWP product boxes can be quite useful as well if there's something specific you want to recommend. And so all you have to do is again click on add block AAWP and then this time we're going to click on product boxes. It's going to ask you to put an ASIN in here and this is basically a unique identifier that Amazon use. The way we get that is if we go to the product itself, scroll down to additional information right here and then we want to grab this ASIN here, come back to our article and paste it in that field and then what you'll see is it's very quickly created a product box for that product. If we want to now put another one, all we have to do is put a comma here and a space and then find the ASIN for the next product that we want to promote. So again, additional information, grab that ASIN, paste that in there. And then you'll see straight away we've now got our two products in here and that's took me about 35, 40 seconds to set up. Again, we could use this as it's come by default, but we do have a bunch of options here we can go through to make this better suited to our particular post. So under the list settings, we can show and hide the ribbon. This doesn't really apply to product boxes, but the options there may be for future reference. We've also got the ability to change the sale text. If the product's on sale, we can write something different in there. We can also order these products, although we could just manually do that through the ASIN. You can here set it to order based on the price, rate, and title, amount saved, and percentage saved as well. We can also filter these products as well if we wanted to, if we had a great big list of ASINs and we wanted to just filter the ones that were made by Homcom, for example, then we could put that in there and it would just bring those back. We've then got the ability to shorten the title length. If 100 characters is too long, we could set this down to 50 and then we're going to get the ellipsis again. We can once again change the links from basic to going straight through to the review page or adding it straight to the cart. We can also again set the number of items on the description lower than five. We could set that to three like I normally do and we could say we only want to show 100 characters or so on each of those items. We can again change the image size. We can overwrite the Amazon button text, whether or not we want to show or hide the ratings and reviews. And then once again, we can change the output style of these different product boxes. If we now just save that as a draft and then take a look at it, you'll see it looks very similar to the one that we set up earlier. Only this time we've used the ASIN codes to specify exactly what products it is that we want to show. Another really powerful feature of AAWP is its comparison tables. Now these work a little bit different to what we just looked at, but they're also quite easy and quick to set up. So all you need to do is in the sidebar here, underneath AEWP, if you click on Tables, and then click on Add New, you'll then be able to put a title in here, and this is gonna be used later, so it's worth giving it a title you'll recognize, so we'll put this as Which Bookshelf. And then as we come down here, we can see that we can add in ASINs again to select which products we wanna compare. Let's use those same two bookshelves again, so I'm gonna grab the ASIN for that one paste it in here, click add product by ASIN, scroll down a little bit, copy that other ASIN, paste that in there and click add product by ASIN. That's our two products in there now, which is good. Now when we come up to the top, here's where we're now gonna select which rows we show in our comparison table. And so the way that I like to do this is the first thing, I click add new row, and I wanna select here the thumbnail. So this is gonna put the image at the top of our comparison table. And I also like to click on this paperclip icon right here because this means that it's going to make that image a link through to the product page. So next, this is where it's up to you how you do it. The next one that I'll normally do will be the title, but you've got different options here that you can use. You can set the, uh, you could put the price here, prime status, star rating, reviews. You could put a buy now button uh, or some custom HTML, which we're going to look at in a minute. Uh, I always put this second one as title and then I'll put the label here as name. This will output on the left, which you'll see in a minute when we publish this, you'll see how it outputs. And then we're going to do add new. Now for this particular one here, I don't really have any other ones of these preset that I want to use from the product data, but we've got some custom HTML that I want to do. So I'm going to select that. And the first one I'm going to do is wood. And we're going to pretend that the wood of one of them is oak and the wood of another one is pine. So as we come down here, we can see that this is gonna just do its thing. It already knows what to do because we set it up here. But this one here has got a field that we need to fill in. So this first product, we're gonna basically call this um, oak. 
and we're going to call this one here pine and then after that the next field I'm going to add is I'm going to add a guarantee field which is going to be a another custom HTML and I'm going to write the word here guarantee and then scroll down and I'm just going to make this up and say that this has two years and then I'm going to say the same thing on this one here as well and then finally what we want to do is we want to add a um, you know check price button here so if we do add new row and then we can put buy now button and we'll put the label as price so then it will show the price and because of the way we set this up earlier then it will say check price and it will have the button there and that is about it for this so if we go ahead and click on publish now if we go to our WordPress post click on the add block then click on AWP and then we come down and click on the comparison tables it's going to then have the option here to select a table we want to select the one we just created like that and then save draft now we can see our two different products in here with all the different stuff that we set so we've got our product here with the link as you can see if I click that it take us through to the product then we've got the title of the product here we've got the wood that we put in here with the custom HTML the guarantee with the custom HTML and then we've got the price with the check price so let's have a look at that now on the actual website how this would output and as you can see a really good looking comparison table right there now let's say that in this example we were actually wanting to recommend this one what we can do is we can make this one the highlighted one so if we come back to our table and we look at that second one here we've got the option for highlight product and we can click on this and make this a color so we might want to make this green for example and then if we come back up click update and then when we refresh this that one there is now going to be in green like that so that's going to make that one stand out more than that one next to it you can also use AAWP to get back product data from a single product and the way that you do that again is you click on the add block AAWP and then click on data fields and that's going to ask you for the ASIN so let's use this product again and then if we paste in that there then we've got the option for a value here and this is going to show you the different things we can do so we can get back the name of it the description the image the star rating the price or the button now the only one of these that I've ever seen actually be useful is the price here because of Amazon's policy about showing outdated prices on a website and so if you was to click on that that's going to update every 12 hours and make sure you've got the most recent price on your website the only downside to this is you can't really get text either side of it so that has to be on its own line so if you was making an article about this specific product you'd have to say something like the price today is colon and then have that on its own line that's when you use the block however you can actually use the short code that AAWP gives you which means you could also do this you could say the price today is and then this is going to look a lot more natural you could say Amazon and then fields equals double quotes and then paste in that ASIN there and then value equals price and then close the square bracket and then you might want to say uh, something after it like this is a great deal and if we save that and then we take a look at that you'll see that we've got the first one right here which wants to be on its own line and then we've got this other one which can have text either side of it so I actually if I was going to use that I would definitely go for the short code over the block we can also add the Amazon boxes and the Amazon bestseller list through the WordPress shortcode that AAWP gives you as well so if we wanted to create the boxes like we did earlier for those two different bookshelves we can do square bracket Amazon and then we'll do box equals double quotes close that square brackets and then we just need to get the ASINs in there so I'm going to come back here copy that paste that into there comma space and then get the other one and then if I save draft on this and we have a look we've got both of those two there that we just put in so that's how we do the specific and then also if we wanted to do the bestseller list we can actually do a lot of the different filters and stuff on there as well so I wrote this one out earlier we've got here Amazon so bestseller equals and then our keyword and then we want to filter by the price and say filter 100 
So that's going to be £100 and say that the filter compare needs to be more than that £100. We're going to say to get back 10 items and then just filter three of them or just give us back three of them so that we definitely get or hopefully we'll get the uh, products that we want. So let's save that, have a look at that. So now underneath this here we should have our bestseller list and as you can see we've got one, two, three different products like that. And we could also go into more specifics and tidy it up even more if we wanted to, but more often than not, we're not going to need to. In the past, the way I used to manage this was I would get the writer to write out the article completely, and then I would get the publisher to publish it on the website, and then we'd mark it all down in our spreadsheet right here, and then in the future I'll come back through this and then add this section into all of the articles where it's relevant. There's a couple of problems with doing it in this way, and so we don't do it like that anymore. The first problem is that it's something that will often get forgotten about completely, because there's no set time when it gets done. It often won't get done until way later down the process, and we could have lost quite a bit of commission there. On top of that, the writer has already gone through and done a load of research about these different products anyway, so it makes more sense to teach the writer how to do it, and then make it easy for the writer to communicate that to the publisher. So the way that we now handle this, is the writer will actually put the short code into the article that they've been writing here and then they'll put a comment on that short code saying the word short code and then that way the publisher just needs to go through copy that come back to the article click on the new block do a search for short code and then paste in whatever it was that they put there that's the most efficient way I found of doing it because it means only one person has to go through and do the research and then after that I'll mark down in the sheet that that page has been monetized and I can just have a quick look and make sure that it's not pulling back any products that are ridiculous. That's about everything when it comes to how we use AAWP. If you found this video helpful make sure you leave a like and then subscribe to the channel for more.